you everyone welcome back to utility sports and if you're new to the channel make sure to leave a like on today's video and also subscribe it would really help us as we're nearing 7200 subscribers it would be huge if you could push us over the top and in this video we're clearly talking about jordan love and his future with the green bay packers and in the nfl because i think that's really up in the air right now after some of the biggest news of the day today with Aaron Rodgers signing a huge extension with the Green Bay Packers. We'll get more into that. I'll give you my thoughts on that as well. It's a huge day for Green Bay. It's also a huge day for Jordan Love's agent because I think right now he's probably canvassing the league, seeing what the best destination is for his player, for Jordan Love, where he could be playing his football next season. So we'll talk about that and more in today's video. Again, leave a like if you're new and also subscribe if you're new as well. So let's get into it here with Jordan Love. We'll start off with his history with the Green Bay Packers. He was the 26th overall draft pick back in the 2020 NFL draft. So after two seasons, really hasn't seen a ton of play time as he's only appeared in six games, started in one only due to an Aaron Rodgers injury. And that's what you would expect when you're drafted behind a guy who's been a multi-time MVP. You're not going to get a lot of run in the beginning part of your NFL career. And obviously the GM there in Green Bay, Brian Gutekunst, have plans of replacing Rodgers with Jordan Love, similarly to how the Packers over a decade ago had replaced Brett Favre with Aaron Rodgers. Now, I don't think this situation has played out that way. Aaron Rodgers, of course, has been a back-to-back -back MVP now these past two years since Jordan Love got on the roster. So perhaps Jordan Love was enough motivation for Aaron Rodgers to start playing great football and really be the guy that we've known him to be throughout his NFL career, which now puts us in a spot where we look at Jordan Love's stats and our team's going to be interested in him. You look at a guy who's played in six games, started one, lost that game, completed under 60% of his balls. He's thrown about 60 passes. So it's not really big volume. Has 411 pass yards, nearly seven yards per attempt, two touchdowns and three interceptions. So first of all, if you're in a fantasy league, try getting him in a fantasy keeper league right now. That might have a little bit of value to you because I do think he's going to get traded. He is a six foot four, 220 pound quarterback though. So he is going to be someone who physically really impresses a lot of teams. He's got a cannon of an arm. And I know right now, a lot of those teams are watching him back at the combine. They're watching him on his pro day, trying to evaluate the arm talent and exactly what he could bring to an NFL roster. He's got fairly good athleticism. He's fairly mobile. And he's also someone who in that draft class, people thought maybe he had higher upside than Joe Burrow or Justin Herbert. People thought that Jordan Love could potentially be Patrick Mahomes. That's who he got compared to. Now, I did not compare him to Patrick Mahomes. I thought that was ridiculous. But other people did based on some of his mechanics, the way that he could deliver a deep ball. Jordan Love, I mean, there is some upside here for a team interested in getting involved. So for his future now with Aaron Rodgers signing a four-year, $200 million deal with the Packers, he is probably not going to stay in Green Bay. I would be shocked if he does because you'd get him past his fifth-year option. He'd be able to head toward an unrestricted free agency. And with Aaron Rodgers making 50-plus mil per season, it does make it very tough to keep another young quarterback on the roster, especially if you have to pay him a little bit of money, especially considering that fifth-year option. I just don't see him finishing that contract with the Green Bay Packers it would be shocking to me if he did. And now my quick thoughts here on Aaron Rodgers. The Packers got this right. Uh, I know it hurts. You drafted Jordan Love in the first round. That's the miss here. Drafting Love in the first round when you had Aaron Rodgers. This is not a mistake. Keeping Aaron Rodgers. He's a great quarterback. Multi-time MVP. And quite frankly, one of the most talented players to ever play football. So for me, the Packers, it was shocking that they traded up to draft Jordan Love. Uh, and I think now they're finally making the right decision, tying themselves to Aaron Rodgers long term. He did put a lot of pressure on that franchise, not only with what he was saying off the field, but also his performance on the field. And it's hard to move on from a guy who's won back to back MVPs. You're not going to get requisite value for someone in their late 30s who's playing at the level uh, that Aaron Rodgers has been playing at. And I think Tom Brady shows that you don't necessarily need to be a spry chicken to find a lot of success in the NFL. And I think the Packers here are banking that Aaron Rodgers can stay healthy and can stay the player that he's been the last two seasons. So for Jordan Love, let's talk about the teams that are potentially interested here. And there's a few that I think really make some sense. Starting off with the Denver Broncos. They have a top 10 pick in this year's draft. Uh, and they're an interesting squad here, simply because 
I'm not sure what they're going to look at for the quarterback spot. I think that they're going to look at some veterans. I think they're going to look at guys in the NFL draft. And George Payton there, he's been building a great defense. Does he want to continue building that defense? Does he want to find the quarterback of the future? He was there in Minnesota when the Vikings drafted Teddy Bridgewater. Does he have an alliance to Teddy Bridgewater? Does he want to keep Teddy on the roster moving forward? Does he see Teddy as their long-term quarterback? Or are they going to try and find a way to address it? For me, I think they need to address it. And I think Jordan Love would be an interesting pull for them. The issue here is finding value. So I think Jordan Love is going to get looked at around the league, kind of similar to what Carson Wentz was when he got traded from Philadelphia, where it's a second round pick that could conditionally become a first rounder based on either play time or win loss, whatever it is, you know, a conditional first. So for me, it makes some sense here for the Broncos. If you want to go out and get Jordan Love for a second round pick, that's worth it to me. And if you could do it in this year's draft, it'd be huge. You can add Jordan Love. You can add little risk there just by giving up a second round pick. They have two of them this year as well. Considering the Von Miller trade, maybe they try and attach that third rounder from the Rams as well. So you could look at Von Miller essentially being traded for a player like Jordan Love here, which addresses your quarterback need. And Von Miller perhaps could come back in free agency if you're Denver. And you look at a much improved team and then you still have the ninth overall pick to play with as well, whether that's getting an offensive tackle, could be looking at an edge, could be looking in the secondary. I mean, the Broncos here are really well set up. They could find some really, really good improvement by making a move here for Jordan Love at the right price. And then moving on to another team, the New Orleans Saints, who this one's a little bit trickier for me, but I do think that they should be interested at least. I don't necessarily think this is the one that's going to get done. I don't see Jordan Love being a New Orleans Saint for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, for Jordan Love, you have to consider the fact that you know, he's going to be entering the third year of his rookie deal, which means you really have a two-year trial before you're signing up for that fifth-year option. Now, the Saints, they're kind of in a retooling rebuild right now. Teron Armstead, they're going to lose him in free agency. We haven't seen Michael Thomas play football in over a year. There's a lot of questions there. And if you want to throw some assets out the door for a guy like Jordan Love, who you basically have for two seasons before he becomes expensive, there's a risk there because that asset that you're trading for him could become really valuable. And the issue with the Saints here is they don't have those extra seconds and thirds like the Broncos do to make a deal. So you probably would have to send out your first. Now, if you're planning on drafting a QB with that first round pick and you think Jordan Love's better, then it makes sense to do that. But at the same time, they might be looking and say, well, maybe we think Malik Willis has higher upside. We've seen Jordan Love a little bit in the NFL. He hasn't looked great. Maybe we want to go with a guy like Malik Willis out of Liberty or Kenny Pickett out of Pitt or maybe Matt Corral out of Ole Miss. Those three options do make some sense. And you get them for a longer term rookie contract, technically, because they're going to be entering their first year in the league where Jordan Love's going into his third. Moving on to the next team, I've got the Atlanta Falcons here. And this is another one that makes a lot of sense. Maybe you could even move Matt Ryan this offseason if you think Jordan Love's ready. Otherwise, you get Jordan Love in, let him sit for a little bit. Remember, Brett Favre got traded from the Falcons to the Packers. Now, maybe the Falcons get their revenge here and take away a Packers young quarterback in Jordan Love, and hopefully he can have a phenomenal career for them. For Atlanta here, again, they have two second round picks, so they have more flexibility than a team like New Orleans, of course, because they traded Julio Jones to Tennessee. They were able to pull away that second round pick, and that could be huge here in negotiations to get a deal done for Jordan Love. Maybe it's a second and a third. Maybe it's a second and a fourth and a fifth or something. Whatever it is, I, I don't think the Falcons would give up their, their top 10 pick here. Same with Denver. I just don't see Jordan Love getting dealt for a top 10 pick. But I do think he's going to get traded probably for a second or a low end first. So like with where New Orleans is at without their flexibility, they'd probably have to give up their round one pick. But otherwise, uh, teams like Atlanta, Denver, you're probably looking at a day two pick or maybe two day two picks for Jordan Love. And I think this would be an interesting way for the Falcons to get an asset here, especially now that Calvin Ridley is not going to be tradable since his suspension. Now moving on to the New York Giants here. This is an interesting one. I know Giants fans are going to say, whoa, you think we're a destination for Jordan Love? I do. I think I would I would not bet on this. I, I don't think the Giants are going to be the favorite to land Jordan Love. But new head coach, new GM, the Bills really like athletic profile players with big arms. That's what Jordan Love is. You know, Brian Dable found a lot of success with Josh Allen, really developed him up. And I think that he's probably looking for a similar quarterback and they decided to not pick up the fifth year option on Daniel Jones. So the writings on the wall that Daniel Jones isn't their guy unless he has a phenomenal season this year. So if they do really like Jordan Love, 
they can make a move for him. The thing that they have is two top 10 picks. So if they trade one of those down, bring in some extra assets, it's very possible that we could see them picking twice in the top 20 and adding Jordan Love to that roster already. They have a ton of flexibility. Joe Shane's really in a good spot here with what he's inherited as their new GM uh, because of two top 10 picks. I mean, they have phenomenal assets already. They got some really good players. They're a quarterback away and I think a, a few other key players away from becoming a really great team. Maybe they evaluate Jordan Love as that guy. Thing is, I'm a little more skeptical of Jordan Love. I don't necessarily know if he moves the needle as much for these teams, but the upside and potential is there that I think teams are going to be really willing to whisk, take that risk. And now this is my favorite to land Jordan Love here. That's the Pittsburgh Steelers. They have a pick in the mid to low first round. And I think that's what they're going to try and use to get Jordan Love. I know that uh, the Steelers would have had interest in Aaron Rodgers. He decided to stay put in Green Bay. So I think the Steelers become the inherent favorite for Jordan Love. He's clearly more talented than Mason Rudolph. He's clearly going to have a better long-term career than Mason Rudolph. The Steelers, I, they can look at me until they're blue in the face and say, Mason Rudolph's our guy. I don't believe it. You can't believe that. That is a whole bunch of baloney. And with where they're picking the draft, it's possible all the QBs go off the board. So they might have to be aggressive in bringing in Jordan Love. We're going to have to monitor Jordan Love's situation. But if I had to pick a favorite right now to land Jordan Love, it would be the Pittsburgh Steelers. I am very... I very much believe that he would be their option going into next season. Uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and also comment your thoughts on where Jordan Love will go. Maybe there's a team I missed that you think should be included on here. Uh, the Carolina Panthers would be one that would come to my mind on that. Thanks again so much for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed and we'll catch you in the very next Utility Sports video.